Mr. Speaker, our constitution sets out in respect of the division of revenue criteria for sharing nationally raised revenue between national departments, provinces, and municipalities. Proposals for this division are set out in the Division of Revenue Bill that's in this pack. Total expenditure from the National Revenue Fund of 889 billion rands is provided for in 2011-12, which is 9.8% more than the revised estimate of the current financial year. Debt service costs will amount to 77 billion rands, rising to 104 billion rands in 2013 and 2014. Though our overall debt burden remains moderate, the size of the budget deficit at present results in debt service costs rising faster than any other category of spending over the period ahead. Secondly, in keeping with established practice, the budget framework includes an unallocated contingency reserve of 4 billion this year. This allows for unforeseeable and unavoidable spending requirements next year and future policy priorities over the medium term. And thirdly, this leaves us 808 billion rounds to be allocated to national government, provincial government, <coughs> and local government in 2011-2012. Minister Sisulu, only 808 billion rounds. <laughs> national departments are allocated 47% of the total, provinces 44%, and municipalities just under 9%. Remember that municipalities are also supposed to generate their own revenue. National transfers to local government have increased substantially and will amount to over 70 billion rands in budgetary assistance and infrastructure grants in 2011-2012. Mr. Speaker, the proposed medium-term expenditure framework has been structured to enable government's policy priorities to be implemented in accordance with the delivery agreement signed with the President. The 2011 budget makes available 94 billion rounds in addition to baseline allocations over the next three years. Savings of 30 billion rounds were identified, of which 21 billion rounds were prioritized within departments to meet existing commitments. In order to accommodate additional funding for the National Student Financial Finance Aid Scheme, all departments were required to effect unprecedented spending cuts of 0.3% amounting to six billion rounds that went to Minister Nzimande. I thought he'll smile a little bit more, but uh, he wants more, you see. I want to place on record our appreciation to cabinet colleagues and departmental accounting officers for their cooperation in this unprecedented exercise. Part of this revision to baseline allocations is the carry-through cost of the 2010 wage agreement, which requires an additional 39.4 billion rounds for the remuneration of employees over the MTEF period. The public service salary bill has doubled over the past five years, from 156 billion to 314 billion. This constitutes just under 40% of consolidated non-interest expenditure. Members of the House will know that the spending plans of national government departments, public entities, and social security funds are set out in considerable detail in the estimates, that's the thick book here, uh, of uh, consolidated government expenditure for the period ahead uh, are set out in chapter eight of the budget review. Consolidated expenditure is projected to increase from 897 billion in 2011-12 to 1.2 trillion, we're all growing up, 1.2 trillion in 2013-2014, with non-interest spending on public services growing by an average of 8% a year. What are we spending the money on? Firstly, creating jobs. As you have emphasized, Mr. President, our aim is to put development first and not dependence on welfare. As Tosa spe people, uh, speaking people say, Masis and Zele, don't do it ourselves. Let's do it ourselves. <laughs> I was thinking of somebody who would say, don't do it ourselves. 
The budget therefore proposes a range of measures to accelerate employment creation over the period ahead. And as announced by the President, 9 billion rands has been set aside for the next three years for a jobs fund to co-finance innovative public and private sector employment projects. Further education and training colleges are allocated 14 billion rands in the period ahead, and the student financial assistance will be stepped up. Over 20 billion rands goes to what we call the CETAs, and 5 billion rands to the National Skills Fund, which have key responsibilities for training work seekers. The expanded pu public works program is, 70, is allocated 73 billion rands over the next three years, including community-based projects, environmental and social programs, and maintenance of roads and infrastructure. Tax incentives have been renewed for manufacturing investment of 20 billion rands with a focus on job creation potential. Investment will be increased in housing and residential infrastructure and services. Small enterprise development and small business development initiatives will be strengthened, including a focus on employment activation by the National Youth Development Agency. Initiatives are underway. Initiatives are underway to promote rural employment and provide stepped-up support for agricultural producers. Funding is allocated for renewable energy, environmental protection, and green economy initiatives. As promised last year, details of a 5 billion rand youth employment subsidy are set out in a discussion paper for further consideration in this house and at NEDLAC. Now, if we add all of these, we have approximately 150 billion rands to spend both on job creation and on skills related activities over the next three years. We must offer young work seekers real hope where at present there is despair. We need to do things differently as the president often urges us. We need to have the courage to pilot new approaches and build new partnerships, promoting innovation throughout our economy. What do we do to improve the quality of education? Education takes up the largest share of government spending, 21% of non-interest allocations, and receives the largest share of additional allocations. An amount of 8.3 billion rands over the MTF period is added for schools infrastructure, <coughs> a program to address backlogs in school facilities over a three-year period will be administered by Minister Motseka's department. Just under 1 billion rands is added for the Funza Lushaka teacher bursaries and bursaries for postgraduate students in natural sciences. 9.5 billion rands is provided for expanding further education and training colleges and skills development, including adjustments for the remuneration of teachers. A total of 24.3 billion rands will be added to education and skills spending over the next three years, which rises from 190 billion rands next year to 215 billion rands in 2013-14. Ministers Nzimande and Motseka exercise stewardship over this money, Mr. Speaker, over the large, and over the largest network of service providers in our economy, and the most important program of investment in future growth and distribution. What about our health services? Several further steps in implementing Minister Motsueleri's 10-point plan for reform of the health services are accommodated in this budget. Total spending on public health services has increased strongly over the past three years to 113 billion rands projected for the next year. In addition to provision for higher personnel expenditure over the period ahead, over 8 billion rands is added to specific health service interventions, laying the foundations for the national health insurance. This includes, amongst other things, 1.2 billion rands to introduce family health care teams, money to improve the quality in health facilities, medical equipment, and hospital systems, improvement in the district-based maternal and child health services, a new Office of Standards Compliance to inspect and certify hospitals, funding for the Department of Health to lead the necessary institutional and management reforms, revitalizing health infrastructure, including a new infrastructure grant for provinces, expanding capacity to train medical doctors and nurses. Let me emphasize that one of the things that Minister Motsoleri and I are quite anxious on 
is that as far as tertiary hospitals are concerned, as far as uh, the new medical training facilities are concerned, if we are to deli deliver, deliver them with efficiency, it's important that they coordinate it at a national level. Total expenditure on the comprehensive HIV AIDS conditional grant will amount to 26.9 billion rands over the MTEF period, based on an increase in the number of people on treatment from 1.2 million this year to 2.6 million people in 2013-14. The phasing in of the national health insurance will require substantial reforms to address imbalances across the public and private sectors and expand health professional training. The financial and organizational implications of these reforms are being jointly addressed by the Department of Health and the Treasury. How do we make communities safer? Additional resources, Minister Mtetwa, are also allocated to the safety and security cluster led by Ministers Khadebe, of course, Minister Mtetwa, Minister Kwele, and Minister Mapisa Ngakula for the period ahead. A total of 12.8 billion rand goes to the departments of police, justice and constitutional development, correctional services and the independent complaints directorate. The budget provides 2.1 billion rands for increase in police personnel to 202,260. They've really done the calculations well. In 2013-14, from uh, the present number of about 190,000 police persons. An additional 670 million rands is allocated for the upgrade of information technology, and 490 million rands is for the construction of courts, including the high courts in Nelspreit and Polokwane. Total expenditure, that must be people from Polokwane who are. <laughs> Pub total expenditure on public order and safety functions will amount to 91 billion rands next year. On Minister Sisulu's defense vote, further allocations are made for assistance in safeguarding the country's borders and to upgrade and maintain border facilities and equipment. Additional funding of 1.3 billion rands will bring the total expenditure on defense and state security to 38.4 billion rands next year. In terms of economic development and industrial promotion, additional allocations in support of industrial and economic development in the period ahead include 600 million rands for enterprise invest investment in incentives, sorry, 735 million for the Competition Commission and other economic regulatory agencies, 250 million rands to the IDC for supporting agro-processing and businesses, 120 million rands for national tooling initiatives, so all of us can learn to be a carpenter. 282 million rands for the microfinance apex fund and 55 million rands for Kula Enterprises to pilot a new approach to small business lending. Under the guidance of Minister Davies, about, about 10 billion rands will be spent on the Industrial Policy Action Plan investment promotion over the MTF period, including the Automotive Production and Development Program, Clothing and Textiles Production Incentives, the film and television production incentive, and support for small manufacturing and tourism enterprises. The word incentive means we're giving money away. Small businesses are an important source of jobs. Businesses that employ fewer than 50, 50 workers account for 68% of private sector employment. We need to get our small business sector growing and growing fast. Allow me to share just a few examples very inspiring examples from small business entrepreneurs in South Africa. Mr. Corsi is a young man with a passion for building skills in his community, Willowvale. He has set up a small ICT training center where he has trained more than 120 people in IT skills. Mr. Norman Mpedi is an ex-MK combatant who after being forced to live off the bush in Angola discovered, Mr. President, I'm not sure if you know this fruit, called the Mvio fruit, and has grown this into a thriving juice-making Nguni ju uh, juice, that's what it's called. So here's an ex-combatant who you think wouldn't do these sorts of things, who has shown what entrepreneurship and creativity can do. Our third example is Antonio Pue, started 
exact tech fraud solutions in 2007 as a small one-person business operating out of his home and has since grown it to a company with offices in Johannesburg, Cape Town, and Durban, and he now employs 24 people. Congratulate them. <laughs> These are but a few examples of thousands of small and micro businesses which have taken root and fill a vital space in our economy. In many instances, they have been supported by financing from both the private sector and programs of, of the Department of Trade and Industry. Rural development and agriculture are crucial areas in our economy. Under Ministers Jumat Peterson and Minister Nquinti, government's land reform and agricultural development programs are focused on rural job creation and poverty reduction, while expanding agricultural production and improving food security. Additional allocations amounting to 2.2 billion rands go to these functions, including a further 400 billion rands for the Comprehensive Agricultural Support Program and the Land Care Program grant and funding to enable a further 5,000 recruits into the National Rural Youth Services Corps. Including provincial allocations for agricultural support, a total of 19 billion rands will be spent on rural, rural development and agriculture in 2011-2012. Minister Ndebele and Transport. Uh, no money for tolls right now. <laughs> Additional allocations of 10.3 billion rands are made over the MTEF for transport infrastructure and services on Minister Ndebele's vote. This includes 3.8 billion rands for maintenance of coal haulage road networks, financed from the increased levy on electricity collected from ESCOM. An additional 1.5 billion rands goes to provinces for road maintenance and way bridges as part of a new conditional grant for roads infrastructure so that we don't complain about potholes anymore. Oh. Funds are also stepped up for the Passenger Rail Agency of South Africa for replacing signaling infrastructure and refurbishing rail coaches. And a further 2.5 billion rands goes to municipalities for public transport systems and infrastructure improvement. Consolidated government transport spending will amount to 66 billion rands next year. Environmental protection and adapting to climate change, as I mentioned earlier, is also a crucial task. Funding amounting to 800 million rands has been set aside over the next three years for green economy initiatives, including those recently announced by Minister Patel. Specific allocations will be made in the adjustments budget Alloca additional allocations for research into energy efficiency technologies are proposed, and Minister Peters will be happy with that, while provision is also made for efforts to prevent wildlife trafficking and improved air quality, waste disposal, and coastline management. A total of 2.2 billion rands is allocated for environmental employment programs over the medium term period, and funding is provided on Minister Molewa's vote for hosting the Conference on Climate Change, COP17, in November this year. Total spending on integrated national electrification program will increase to 3.2 billion rands in 2013-14. Minister Sekwale and uh, Housing and Community Services. Mr. Speaker, recent research published by the Development Policy Research Unit confirms that significant progress has been made in the delivery of housing water, sanitation, and electricity, as the President mentioned in his speech. The proportion of poor households living in formal dwellings has increased from 47% in 1994 to 66%. Households with piped water have increased from 28% to 53%. Those with electricity for, for lighting from 20% to 75%. With flush or chemicals sanitation from 18% to 37%. Additional allocations to Minister Sakwale's vote for human settlements upgrading and municipal services amount to 4.9 billion rands over this period. Two new grants to provinces and municipalities are proposed under, under Minister Shteka's oversight to respond more rapidly to disasters. A further 3.6 billion rands is added for water infrastructure and services, including funding for the acid water drainage threat associated with abandoned underground mines. 
A report on this by a team of experts has been approved by Cabinet, and Minister Mulewa is taking the lead in consulting with industry on a shared and coordinated response to this challenge. Government aims to upgrade 400,000 homes in informal settlements by 2014. A new Urban Settlements Development Grant contributes 21.8 billion rands over the next three years for these projects. Total spending on the housing, water and community amenities, social wage will amount to 122 billion rands in 2011-12. Social protection. The social protection budget is another substantial part of the social wage in South Africa. This practical expression of a caring society amounts to 147 billion rands in 2011-2012 to provide income support to poor households that has been extended over the past decade, mainly through the phased extension of the child support grant to older children. At present, close to 15 million fellow citizens receive social grants on Minister Lamini's vote, equivalent to more than a quarter of the population. 38% of social grant payments go to pensioners, 35% to children in poor households, and 19% to the disabled. With effect from April this year, the monthly state old age grant and the disability care and dependency grants will rise by 60 rands a month to 1,140. But here's a plus. For pensioners over the age of 75, the old age, old age grant will rise a further 20 rands a month to 1,160. Foster care grants will increase by 30 rands to 740 rands. The child support grant will increase from 250 rands to 260 rands in April and to 270 rands in October. Revisions are also proposed to the means test thresholds, which will benefit households with modest incomes and reduce their grant entitlements. Social protection also includes unemployment insurance, occupational injury compensation, and the road accident fund. Proposals are now well advanced for alignment and consolidation of these social security arrangements, together with the introduction of a mandatory basic retirement savings plan. Over 9 billion rands a year is currently spent in administering our fragmented social security system. An integrated and better coordinated social security system will offer better protection for vulnerable households at a lower administrative cost and lay a foundation for future generations. That's all the spending. Now where's the money going to come from? <laughs> <laughs>